Okay, so today's March 21st, and I'm going to start off with how God is so encouraging when I'm kind of not in the mood to do this last video of the darkness. I just, when I think about doing this video, I think about how I felt after I did the first two, and I'm like, I just don't want to do that anymore. Can I move on to something else? But this is the final part, and I had heard in my sleep last night, um, fall face, which I had to look up what that means. It's an idiom that means uh, someone who is sad or a sad face or they look unhappy or they're disappointed. Just that sulking kind of look. And to go with that, I opened up my Bible and I landed on Zephaniah 3. And see in this midst of purple, there's some green there. And it says, cheer up, don't be afraid. And then I even tried to record this already like three times and I gave up and I started again. Um, but I closed my Bible and then I opened it and I landed on Revelations chapter 2 and verse 10 said, Stop being afraid for what you are about to suffer. You know, feelings, I guess. And then in my other Bible... I opened that one and I landed on Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 17 it says something like do not be afraid of anyone for judgment belongs to God further down I got on to verse 21 and toward the end it says do not be afraid do not be discouraged and again in verse 29 it says I said then I said to you do not be terrified do not be afraid of them so God is always finding ways to encourage me and I I suggest that you whatever you're feeling I have a video called um Jesus is the key to emotional energy whatever you're feeling go to the word because there's going to be something in there for you when you need to get out of your feelings because I needed to get out of my feelings um I also someone donated to me items that I requested what is that on my lip? Is it glitter? Um, so I requested some items from church because I use them when I when I go and do donations and things like that. Um, and one of the things was like a soap dish, so like a soap box. And this is going to be a weird chain of events. I talked about having to wash my clothes at my dad's house because my laundry, uh, my washer is broken. So. In doing so, I set that laundry basket when I got home on top of a box, but I didn't know that my husband had sandpaper under it because when I um, pulled the basket off, sandpaper fell on the floor. How this relates to this message, later I was led to open this kid's book that I use for school, and I landed on um, a story that mentions right here it says sandpaper so I was like okay what are the odds that I dropped sandpaper and now you want me to open this book and talks about sandpaper so I read it um it also mentions a soapbox right there and I have a stool in my bathroom like a step stool so when people say get on your soapbox like stand up there and say what you gotta say so this is what I'm doing um I will get back to that book because there is something else in here that goes along with this uh what else um, I heard the iCarly theme song and it says, give me your best and leave, leave it all to me. I also had a dream that I was walking into my dad's house and in the backyard, it was dark outside. And then a white poodle came up behind me and like jumped on my back and I turned around and it grabbed my finger with its mouth. This is not a bite because I know that in dreams, sometimes a bite that's in a negative sense can mean different things but this was like a Lassie and Timmy moment so you know how Lassie always went around and pulled Timmy out of trouble or led them a different way or alert or things like that but it pulled my finger and took me to the side of my dad's house where the, it was just all of a sudden a floodlight was illuminating everything and I could see everything and I kept seeing the word moment and the word queen 
and I mentioned moment in my last video or the video before that but I forgot to say what that was for but it makes more sense here uh, there was a song called Blackbird by Sarah McLaughlin and it says you were always waiting for this moment to arrive which is one of my favorite songs I used to sing it to my daughter my first daughter when I had her in like 2002 and then here's the verse I got to all with all that it was Esther 414 for if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this which goes with the queen which goes with this moment which goes with the Sarah McLaughlin song how I've waited for this moment to arrive and goes back to the dream where I was specifically at my father's house where if I don't say anything that house will perish but God's pulling me back and be like say it get on your soapbox and say what I've been what I've been showing you um, I'll get into some other confirmation verses where God gives me like speak on this which is a lot because I've gone a couple days not wanting to make this video I have Acts 22 15 you will be a witness to all people of what you have seen and heard I have Strong's Greek number 1227 it says to look through to see clearly I have Deuteronomy 435 he showed you these things so you would know that the Lord is God and there is no other I have Matthew 10 27 what I tell you in the dark speak in the daylight what is whispered in your ear proclaim from the rooftops I also have Isaiah 42 9 it says see the former things I have the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring up into being I announce them and then I'm going to get into there was a lot of comments about there's no three days of darkness in the Bible and then I even came out and it's like I don't know what to call it I'm just that's the phrase I know it by and then in that video like you guys came through with providing me the verse that does have it so I'm going to I'm going to read that it's Exodus 10 ver Exodus chapter 10 verse 20 2 and 23 it says so Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky and a total darkness covered Egypt for three days no one could see anyone else or move about for three days yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived and so the title of this video is I'm gonna call it um, let your candles burn or leave your lights on or something in the realm of that I haven't decided yet I have Isaiah 26 and 20 from the NLT version which someone provided to me that went along with the, the second video where I talked about shutting your doors and locking your doors or whatever that one says go home my people and look and lock your doors hide yourselves for a little while while the Lord's anger has passed in the New International I think it says for the Lord's wrath you know wait for the wrath to pass so now I'm gonna get into some things that I noticed was um, candles I have a candle on my front porch for when we sit out there for mosquitoes and I kept noticing that I'm like why do I keep looking at that I know it's there but I keep looking at it and then when we were driving home my husband was driving and I was just looking out my passenger window and I think I noticed one house or two houses either they were right next to each other or further down but those houses both had lots of candles on their front porch like like as decorations so I was like wow that's like five candles and then my husband randomly came home and it's not uncommon for him to bring home a candle but he had like five candles I'm like why are you buying five or six candles like we're not gonna put them all over the place so you know I became the wife at that moment where even though I like candles I was like no I don't know why you bought these but there's a million things that I buy that he's like why'd you buy that so it was like a wash right there and then um I kept seeing videos of people who were making candles that burned for a long amount of time so how to make I think somebody had a video on using Crisco to make a long burning candle so just those things kept coming up I heard a song in my sleep just the tune of it it's by Wu Sung which he's the lead singer of the Rose but this was his solo album and the lyric the song is called modern life and the lyric I heard was don't let the lights go out then I kept noticing peaches 
I, I showed this in another video and I said it would go with something else and this is the something else. Um, this peach mask. Then I remember telling my friend, I'm like, man, I can't stop noticing peaches everywhere. And I had to take a picture of it, which I have it on my phone, but that's the phone I'm using to record, is I was in the fruit and veggie department at Walmart and I look over and I'm like, I'm standing next to the Goya peach nectar display. And so I was like, there's these peaches again. And then another day I was walking and I was next to the Febreze aisle and they had in the middle of the aisle a new scent of peaches and I'm like I can't get away from peaches for the life of me what is going on and then my friend went to Georgia which then I put it together Georgia peaches but that's it goes further down where I saw a video that had Reba McIntyre and that's where it hit me and I started seeing that's the night that the lights went out in Georgia so it's about keeping your your candles burning when there's no lights um, then I'm going to get to how I kept noticing the green utility electric boxes like in neighborhoods, residential neighborhoods, they have them like every other house has these utility boxes and I kept, I'm like, I know they're there. I've lived in my house for such a long time. Why is this being brought to my attention? And it always was like warning, electric, warning, electric. So that was something that was on my mind and then I kept noticing no cell phone use signs and this went on for a while and then one day I know you guys knew it or know about this then AT&T had that problem where all the phones weren't working and I was like is this what you were trying to tell me you wanted me to see these no cell phone use because you knew that AT&T was going to go down for a little while but even after that happened I kept being led to no cell phone use signs for like when you're driving through construction or at hospitals and things like that and camera security camera things and then next I noticed a YouTube reel where a mom had um, these like shoe boxes but they were like plastic bins so pretty big and pretty deep and she was talking about how each of her children are different ages so each of those boxes was assigned to one of those kids and it's just things to do when there is no power and uh, I think she mentioned she hates glitter but the kids enjoy it because they get to play with glitter when the power goes out so it makes it more exciting for them and she mentioned that one of her daughters is older and so she just has those little backup batteries for cell phones so those were always charged up and ready for if the power goes out they could you know, power up their um, electronics to play games or whatever when the power's out. Um, also, when I would go for a walk, I would hear when people have their um, alarms, you know how it makes that whistle sound? Like their security cameras outside, it makes that whistle. So those, I just kept getting my attention when I was going for a walk. I'm like, yeah, it happens all the time. Why do you want me to pay attention to this? Um, next thing, I have an Amazon package that I found when I was cleaning my house because I had ordered a book. Um, I'll grab it. It was, I don't know how long ago I ordered this book. God led me to order this book, but I never opened the package and it just sat on the shelf in the package. So it was this seer book, um, because God explained to me a long time ago that what I do or or whatever this is, it's a seer. And he confirmed that to me by making me continuously sing the Sam I Am song from Cat in the Hat. Sam I Am, Sam I Am. Because Samuel in the Bible was a seer. Um, anyways, so I opened that package finally and that book was there. And I was like, oh, I forgot I ordered this like two months ago. Maybe I'll read it. And I just threw it on the table. But then in my quiet time when I was praying, I heard seer. And I'm like, yes, God, I know you've told me this. I don't really understand all of it still. I'm still learning. But then it wouldn't stop. I couldn't stop saying it. And then finally it dawned on me, oh, you want me to open this book? And I had opened and landed on a page in there that said power outage. Um, 
which I wish I would have marked the page, but I did in the moment. I was just like, oh, wow, more stuff about losing power. And then I shut the book. Um, I have a song by Joan Cook called Please Don't Change. And the lyrics are life off camera, no more sign on the cellular. I got a piece of hair in my mouth. And lives off camera. Then some other songs that had to do with electric. Um, I heard a song called Electric Eel, Electric Avenue, and then that part in Grease Lightning where it says it's electrifying. And then I'm going to get to my Eclipse dream because I'm going to get into this Eclipse stuff. But before I do that, I'll go back to this book and back to that story. It says right here... Uh, am I, I'll point to it now. Oh, my battery is low. So right here it says, Ryan remembered to use his field glasses, which is what you have to use when you go outside and you want to look at the eclipse, you have to use special glasses. So those were some words that stuck out from this story that had that big story and how I even got into this book. Um, so my dream with the eclipse is I had it a long time ago I was just in the house with my mom and my dad and talking and then I opened up these French doors to the back patio which by the way this doesn't exist I this was a dream house I don't have a house that has French doors to a back patio but when I went out there the eclipse was right in front of my face like I could touch it like that's how close it was I was like Oh, an eclipse and I touched it and when I woke up I was singing the total eclipse of the heart song so just total eclipse and I didn't know about the the eclipse that was gonna happen here until about a month ago like I felt so dumb because I'm like why why is all this stuff about are you bringing me about eclipse but I didn't know that we were actually having one so my bad I went to my sister's and I was going to tell her like, Hey, I keep noticing the word eclipse. And then she was scrolling on Facebook and she was like, and I was like, Oh look right there. It says eclipse, but it was a shirt that said eclipse, but it had our city's name on it. And she was like, girl, did you not know that the eclipse is going to be like most available to be seen in where we live? And I was like, really? And to bring back eclipse, I kept, noticing like eclipse gum so that was before my sister had told me that and my daughter has those um five surprise mini brands and she brought to me she's like oh look at this tiny little eclipse gum that's what came in her little surprise ball and i'm like here we go with the eclipse and then she brought to me a campbell's mini chicken noodle soup ah here we go It's a song by Jay hope called Chicken Noodle Soup and he features Becky G. And the lyric is, we always got love for where, for where we came from, so let them know what's up. Because like I said, the eclipse is going to be very heightened in our area where we'll have the actual total darkness strip. I looked at the map and I'm going to talk about that the county that I'm in we have over 400,000 people in our county and it is already they already declared it a natural I mean a national disaster um, they say that by the weekend for the eclipse it's going to possibly triple the amount of our population in our area just to see this eclipse they're talking about massive traffic problems um, they're actually advising us. My sister told me this last Sunday, which I had no idea. So that's how I found out that it was a national disaster. They declared that, um, that they've been telling people to go out there and buy your food prior to this eclipse weekend to go out there and fill up your gas prior to this weekend, which goes back to, um, which I didn't say it, but I kept noticing the word shop, 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 shop. And I'm like, shop for what? And in one of the dreams I shared in a video called um, "Keeper Look, 
something about look to the Lord or always look to the Lord. It's one of the ones where I'm wearing the yellow sweater. I talk about a dream where this crew of builders are in there or they're just, they examine my foundation. They say my foundation is great, blah, blah, blah. If you're interested in that dream, go watch that video. However, this one particular person in that dream represented who they represent in real life and they are a business owner in this city that I know um, but their company has the words all-star in it which brought me to a song called um, all-star by smash mouth where it says I could use a little fuel and what's wrong with taking the back streets because again they're talking about massive traffic problems so take the back roads so that you don't get stuck in the traffic I kept noticing the word more um, even on the back of this mask see where it says more down there but I've noticed it all over the place and that is also a song by J-Hope and it says in the lyrics, pump some gas. And then back to the cell phones, our um, county has said that texting is gonna be easier than having um, the ability to make phone calls because they expect there to be some kind of like problem getting cell phone calls to go through if there's an emergency or for some reason. Um, ERCOT or ERCOT or whatever is Texas's like you like electric company I mean that's how they do the grid right the electric grid I'm gonna get into more of that when I talk about when Snowvid happened um I kept noticing a sign that says local soldiers and like get cash or fast cash or need cash or cash now things like that because ERCOT has talked about they are worried that there might be some problem with power because they get their power from solar so they're worried about the number of hours that they're not going to be able to soak up the sun to keep the grid going and this is not an uncommon thing for where we live sometimes it's so hot the grid goes down when snow had happened or snow snow apocalypse or whatever we had no power personally for a week and it was miserable but i stayed home and dealt with it i mean we ended up having to burn almost everything we have to keep the fireplace going my husband had a bench that he built for me and we had to cut that up into pieces for firewood because we were freezing um that is going to get get to this next part where i heard the word gregorian which i believe that is what our calendar is called the gregorian calendar and this is something that i just probably one of the main reasons why i didn't want to make this video i will feel extra cuckoo crazy but two years ago maybe I opened up one of my Bibles and I landed on Jeremiah 52 6 and then on another day I opened up a different Bible and I landed on 2 Kings 25 3 which both verses say on the ninth day of the fourth month something about the famine in the city or lack of food in the city but I was always like the ninth day of the fourth month, the ninth day of the fourth month. I stuck with that for a little while. And then I have an old video on here where I said, well, the Gregorian calendar is different from the Jewish calendar. But specifically when I heard the word Gregorian, I'm like, okay, wait, are you telling me the ninth day of the fourth month? That happens to be the day after the eclipse. Um, and even though I feel really crazy saying that right now because I don't know what really that means, I just remember that God kept bringing me to that movie, Evan Almighty, where um, in the movie, he dresses up like, or he he's given a task that's like Noah. And he kept saying like, oh, I'm, I have a date. This date, something's going to happen. And it kind of drizzles a little bit. But what ultimately happens is a dam breaks and that's what causes it. So I was like, well, are you telling me that this is a date for something? I don't know okay I'm gonna tell you I do not know 
I'm just telling you what I saw and what God led me to share. And I even, when I was writing this, I'm like, God, I do not want to say this date because this is, I'm already crazy on here. This is going to make me sound even crazier. But then I opened my Bible and I landed on that Psalm that says, um, whoever trusts in the Lord will not be put to shame. So whatever that means for whenever that means, I don't really have to be ashamed of it because at some point, I mean, God says he announces things before it happens. Um, then I'm going to get to this in the Bible. So I opened up to Acts chapter 21 and God had me start reading when Paul got arrested and right about, so that's Acts 21 um, starting at verse 27 in my Bible, it talks about that's when Paul gets arrested. But as I was reading, and before I read the words that I saw, part of being a seer is, is things just kind of pop out to you, just like it popped out to me in those other books. So starting at verse 30, it says, the whole city was aroused and the people came running from all directions and like I said there are so many people coming from outside of the area to be in this city so people coming from all different directions and then it says seizing Paul they dragged him from the temple and immediately the gates were shut so I saw the words immediately the gates were shut because I do live outside a military town where we have um, gates for uh, the military post now, if I keep reading, and this is in your New International, so you could look. I highlighted them, all the words that stuck out to me. Troops, which is when I saw um, local soldiers. It says the whole city was in an uproar. It, and then the words officers, soldiers. I heard rioters because they do have National Guard ready in several states for if this causes some kind of problem. Then further down... I see the word barracks, which, like I said, we're outside a military town, so the word barracks stuck out to me. Um, and then here it just talks about um, violence or people having to be carried away by soldiers. And then I turned the page and I continued reading into the next chapter, and I highlighted those words in purple, and it said, you know, quick, leave immediately. And I'm not saying leave the area, but God had been placed on me. Like, hey, if you're going to stay in town for this, just stay inside. You know, have all the things that you need so you don't have to be in the crowd. Or take a road trip. And then toward the bottom, it said, report it. So here I am telling you all these things that I saw. But right, right at the bottom, and I think it's important to show the proximity here. It says money, and then it says withdraw immediately. So that kind of confirmed all the stuff that I was talking about where I kept seeing get money or whatever. Now, am I saying that, okay, the power's going to go out on the day after the eclipse? Sounds like it, but I don't know. That's just how it's being led to me. That's why I said in my last um, darkness video, I'm not going to say about the eclipse what everyone else might be thinking because I have not watched any eclipse videos because I don't want to have um, my what God is showing me distorted by what I've watched. Um, in that part two, I said that the song I was led to said something about we're far from the far end and I mentioned that there are things that have to happen um, prior to the end times of you know Christ's return. So are we in times that are resembling end times? Are we in those times? Yes, but they're, we're far from the far end. So there's more things that have to happen, which I will get on here again and share those dreams and the verses that go with those dreams. Um, I like those better because I rely heavily on scripture. These darkness ones where I talk about things that I've just seen that God has you know, brought to my attention. I was like, oh, I don't wanna talk about that. It makes me uncomfortable. So, I guess that's it. Um, I can say that 
it's just brought to me that when darkness does come, when those three days of darkness come, there won't be power. So you will need to burn your candles and you will need to have things for your kids to do. And the way the eclipse fell into these messages was, you know, it's going to be dark. It'll be dark like that. Keep your lights on. That's the power, things like that kind of would resemble what it would be like in darkness because the light, the sky will be dark, but I'm just a person. I'm only relaying to you the way that it was on me. And I have another video where I think it's called look to the sky because the salvation is near something like that. I'll link it in here where I talk about aliens. Okay. And, um, one thing I shared was a dream that I was with someone else who was also a dreamer, right? And in that dream, we had to act out parts of my dream and then that person parts of their dream because what I knew and what this person knew together painted the whole picture. So this is the part that God brought to me. It may not be the same as what everyone else is getting about the eclipse, so I'm not discounting any of the other things, but God doesn't give one person everything because you don't want that one person to think they're high and mighty or they're better, they know more or whatever. He gives pieces to each person so that eventually it'll paint the whole picture. So for me, was the eclipse given to me as those were the three days of darkness? No, it was never presented to me that way. But that doesn't mean that anything other people are talking about is invalid. I just don't know that. I know what God brought to me was keep your candles burning when the three days of darkness come. And in regards to the eclipse, just kept bringing me to things about a minor power outage and to be prepared and... um Oh, before I forget, I'm, get, I'm glad God brought it back to my brain. Was I mentioned Snowvid or the Snowpocalypse is what we called it, what we called it here. Is during that time, the shelves were empty, right? It wasn't like a famine famine, but we had to ration out our foods because the shelves were just wiped clean because things weren't coming in because of... Um, the snow and the ice and so our neighborhood you know there was a limit you can only buy like two eggs or two cartons of eggs and like maybe two loaves of bread so I would buy the two eggs and my neighbor would buy the two breads and then we would switch I would give her one of the eggs and they would give me one of their loaves of bread so when I say in the city the famine was so bad I think for me because God is making re, re, making me remember something that already happened I just feel like maybe in my area we might be in a situation like that because we are a hot spot for um, all the travel income for people who want to see the eclipse so that's it um, always find the light be prepared and I'll get on here soon with another video. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.